Okay, guys, let's let's finish mechanics off once and for all. Unless you're doing engineering at uni. <laughs> Feel very sad that this is the end of mechanics coming up. You ready, guys? Okay, so we're going to look at integrating vectors now. Actually, integrating vectors is really difficult and very different from everything that you'll ever ever done before with integrating. No, it's not. It's exactly the same. <laughs> so here it says a particle is moving in a plane. Why does it say it's moving in a plane? It doesn't mean an aeroplane, obviously. Why is it moving in a plane? XYZ. Yeah, not X Y Z. It's just got X Y, a flat plane. If it was moving in three D space, then it would be X Y Z. So that's why we've got this I component and this J component, and we've been told the velocity. Shh. And the velocity, you should always write it as column vectors, is 3t and a half t squared. You're right, Rehan. And we've been told some extra bits of information. Now, these extra bits of information are going to be there. Well, I wonder if you can think why those extra pieces of information might be there. And yeah, for when we integrate the plus c. But weren't you in my lesson before? So why are you spo spoiling this for everyone? No, I just found out right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> OK, and they've been, they're asking us to find out the position vector at time t seconds. When it says at time t seconds, that means you should be anticipating that your answer is in terms of t. OK, you're not looking for a number here. You're looking for an answer. And we know if you want to go from the velocity to the displacement, you integrate. Obviously, it's integrate because we're doing integration. However, you would need to detect whether it's integration or differentiation. So I'm going to integrate these things. And I'm going to, well, I won't be getting that, will I? That will be 3 over 2. That's not right. Yes, it is. God, I've had my mind just turning to mush there. OK. And t cubed, it'll be a sixth t cubed, right? You've got an option now. I'm going to show you the way I don't like, first of all, and then I'll show you the way that I do like. You could either say a constant for this one, and you could say a constant for this one like this. <coughs> or the way that I prefer to do this is just to get rid of those separate constants for i and j and just put a single constant afterwards. But because that single constant is going to be a vector quantity, I underline it to make sure I know it's going to be a vector quantity. Now, if I want to find out what this value of c is, I need to take the information from the question. So the information from the question says that when t equals 0, the position vector is 2 minus 3. So when t equals 0, the position vector is 2 minus 3. This should remind you of when you do integration, indefinite integration, and then they suddenly tell you a coordinate. They give you like an x value and a y value. It's the same thing as that. They're just giving you different values to use. So we've got 2 minus 3 equals, well, that's 0, 0 when you sub zeros in, plus c. So clearly, c is equal to 2 minus 3. Hence, the position vector is 3 over 2 t squared, a sixth t cubed, plus 2 minus 3. But we don't usually like to write these things as like separate parts. I prefer this if it looks like this. Like this kind of thing, OK? It just looks nicer. And that would be in meters. Thinking back to what we've done on some of these things earlier on, can you imagine any kinds of questions that they could potentially ask us after we've come up with this thing? What could they possibly ask us? What kinds of things do they ask once you've come up with a position vector? Um, probably, if we were going to do at rest, that would be quite easy, because we could just see that you'd have 0, 0. So you'd say t is 0. Would there be like different cases like shift? Maybe. What about stuff to do with a compass? What could they ask me to do with a compass? They could kind of ask. I don't know how they'd be able to ask a bearing. I mean, I guess they could ask a bearing, couldn't they? They'd have to tell you at t equals 5, what is the, what's the bearing of the position? What other things? Do you remember some of the things that we looked at with some of the stuff here? Specific compass points that were important. Oh, not, uh, yeah, when it's northeast. So they might say, when is the particle northeast of the origin? What would you do if it was northeast of the origin? You would make these two things equal to each other and then solve it for t. And then you could see when it was northeast of the origin. What about if it was northwest of the origin? Yeah, make one of them negative and then make it equal to the other one. And what about if they said when it was east of the origin? 
the J component is zero. Yeah, you do, one of them will be zero. You just need to draw a little diagram to decide which one it will be. So that's to give you a sense of where this might look, how this might look in like a wider kind of exam question that you could have on this one. We're just going to do one last question here. And the reason I like this last question is because there's just a bit more to it than that one that we've done previously. So now we've got another particle. It's moving in a plane so that at time t seconds, its acceleration is 4 minus 2t. And they've told us some information. They've told us that when t equals 3, the velocity is 6i, and the position vector is 23. And we're going to try and find the angle between the direction of motion of p and i when t equals 2. Now, there's a couple of things I want to unpack here. One of them is about this thing to do with i, because people struggled with that when we looked at the question in the mock exam. But the other thing is this phrase that I've got here, the direction of motion. If we're talking about the direction of motion, out of acceleration, velocity, and position, which of those three things do you think corresponds to direction of motion? Position. What, does mo what is motion when we're talking about motion? Motion is how something is moving. The ones that measures how something is moving out of those three is is velocity. Acceleration is telling you how the velocity is changing. Velocity is telling you how it is moving, OK? So what we're really interested in here is the velocity when t equals 2. Any times it talks about the direction of something, the direction that it's moving, we're saying velocity. If we were saying uh, the direction, we wouldn't really say the direction of any of the other things. We would only really say of how it's moving. So that means I need to find out what the velocity is. How do I find the velocity from the acceleration? Integrate. integrate. So I'm going to go straight in with integrating, and I get 4t, and then I get minus t squared, and I have plus c. OK? But then remember, they told us some information earlier on in the question. They told me that when t was 3, the velocity was what as a vector? Zero. Six, zero, six, zero. Six, zero, not zero, six, six, zero. So we get 6, 0 equals, subbing in t as 3, you get 12 minus 9 plus c. I've just substituted in t as 3 into here. So what does that tell me that c is equal to? Minus 6 and 9, because we did 6 take away 12 and 0 take away negative 9, or you can just think about it adding on. So that now tells me that the velocity is 4t minus 6 and minus t squared plus 9. Still got a bit of work to do, though, because we now actually need to find the angle between the direction of motion of p when t equals 2 and i. So we're now going to say that t equals 2 and find out what v is equal to. But well, if I substitute t in here, I'm going to get 4 times 2, which is 8, minus 6, which is 2. And if I substitute t in here, I would get minus 4 plus 9, which is 5. This is the part that people didn't do so well on the exam. Okay? When it was talking about the angle that something made with i, lots of people thought it was talking about the formula we did for the angle it makes with the axis, which technically works, but that uses cosine. There's a much quicker way of doing this. So I'm just going to draw a quick sketch of the, of the way that it's moving. It's moving two along and five up, like this. Now, the vector i, what does the vector i actually look like? Just show me with your hand. It's just flat. So it's the horizontal. So it's just saying, this is what i is here. I don't care how long it is. It's just saying the horizontal. It's saying, find the angle between the blue line and the horizontal. That's all it's asking for. And you could have done that in your mock exam. So if I want to find out what theta is, it's just the inverse tan of 5 over 2. Which is 68.2 degrees. That was all part A. Wow, there's quite a lot of work there. You can, I think that would probably be five, six, possibly even seven marks. Because if you think about what you're having to do, you're going to get a mark for integrating, maybe not seven, maybe more like four, maybe five. So a mark for integrating, <laughs> a mark for finding C. Then you're going to get a mark for coming up with V and substituting in T equals two. And then you'll probably get a mark here and then an accuracy mark. So probably five marks. I was being a bit over the top there. 
Now it wants the distance. So distance, what should that be making you think of out of the three things, acceleration, velocity, and position? Displacement, Displacement yeah, position. So we're going to be trying to do that. But remember, distance is scalar. So we're going to need to take the magnitude. So I need to find out what the position vector is. And we know that r is going to be the integral of the velocity. Now, don't integrate this bit. You have to integrate this bit. You have to integrate the bit that is going to give you some extra constants. So you're still going to have, well, let's integrate this properly. I've not integrated it properly. Uh, 4t integrates to 2t squared. 2t squared minus 6t. And then the bottom bit is going to integrate to minus a third t cubed plus 9t. And you could add, add on a constant c. And you wouldn't be penalized for that in the exam. But I personally would rather use a different letter because we've already used C earlier on. So don't worry if you use C. It's not gonna, you're not going to lose a mark for it. However, it's better to use something like D, I think, to use a different letter. Now, what am I going to do? How am I going to find out what the constant is? They gave us position of T. Yeah, good. They told us that when T was 3, the position vector was 20 over 3. So when t is 3, the position vector is 23. So I have 23 equals 2 times 3 squared, which is 18, minus 6 times 3, which is 18. Then I've got minus a third times 27, which is minus 9, plus 9 times 3, which is 27, plus d. So nearly there. 23 equals 0 and 18. So that tells you that d is equal to 20 and minus 15. So we just want to very quickly then say that r, when t equals 0, we can look at this. If we make t equals 0, that's going to completely disappear. That's going to completely disappear because it wants us to say the position when time is 0. So we just say that when t equals 0, r is just 20 minus 15. Because this whole bit here and here disappears because of subbing in t is 0. But they actually want to know the distance. So you better Pythagorize your 20 squared plus your 15 squared. That's a 3, 4, 5 triangles. So is it 25? Yeah. Meters. 25 meters. And that's us done with mechanics, OK? So there's a few exam questions that you can try in that booklet. Um, the ones you're going to have a look at are not this one. You can look at this one afterwards. I'd probably rather you start off with these ones because they're new spec questions. So when it says exam questions, you're going to start off with this one here. I'll just put this in in case you are looking at this later on so you've got a mark scheme. Remember, their mark schemes, though, are always done um, with i and j. So you, if you're trying to understand a mark scheme, I would take the i and j out and write it as a column vector. And then we've got this one here. And then we might just make an early start on some stats so that we've got a bit of time at the end of the lesson to, I don't know, do something else. OK? I'll leave it on this one that we had here.